Have you ever wondered why our summers are getting hotter each year? Well, let's dive into it. Scientists are saying that this year, 2023, is on track to be the warmest year we've ever recorded. That's a big deal, right? But what does it mean? Imagine this. It's a hot summer day, and you decide to put on not just one, but several layers of clothing. How would you feel? You'd probably start to feel really hot, right? Well, our Earth is feeling something similar. Our planet is covered by a blanket of gases, much like your clothes. Some of these gases, like carbon dioxide, are like heavy winter coats. The more of these heavy coats there are in our atmosphere, the hotter our planet gets. This is because these gases trap the sun's heat, preventing it from escaping back into space. This is what we call global warming. Now you might be wondering, why is there so much carbon dioxide in the air? Well, a lot of it comes from burning fossil fuels like oil, coal, and gas. When we burn these fuels for energy, we release carbon dioxide into the air. We've been doing this for a long time and now, our planet is wearing too many heavy coats. So what happens when the Earth wears too many heavy coats? The temperature goes up and we experience more heat waves and hotter summers. Just like last year, which tied with 2015 as the fifth warmest year on record. And this year, 2023, is on track to be even warmer. The result? Our Earth heats up just like we would if we wore a heavy coat on a hot day. But don't worry, there are things we can do to help. We'll explore those in the upcoming scenes, so stick around. But what's causing this extra coat for our Earth? You might be wondering. Well, it's a little bit like how you'd put on a jacket when it's cold outside to keep yourself warm. You see, just as a jacket traps your body heat, there are certain gases in our atmosphere that trap the sun's heat around the Earth. These are called greenhouse gases. Now here's where we humans come in. When we do things like drive cars or heat our homes, we're actually contributing to the increase in these greenhouse gases. It's like we're adding extra layers to Earth's jacket, making it warmer. Imagine you're in a car on a sunny day. The sunlight comes into the car and the car's windows trap the heat inside, making it warmer. This is similar to what's happening to our Earth but on a much larger scale. The sunlight comes into our atmosphere, and the greenhouse gases trap the heat, warming up the Earth. Even things like burning coal for electricity or cutting down trees for building materials can add to this. Burning coal releases carbon dioxide, a major greenhouse gas, into the atmosphere. And when we cut down trees, we're removing one of the Earth's ways of absorbing carbon dioxide. It's like taking away a sponge that was helping to soak up some of the heat. And it's not just carbon dioxide. Other gases like methane and nitrous oxide are also greenhouse gases. Methane comes from things like waste in landfills and the digestive systems of cattle. Nitrous oxide comes from agricultural and industrial activities, as well as during the combustion of fossil fuels and biomass. But here's the thing, we need some greenhouse gases. Without them, our Earth would be too cold for us to live. They're like the Earth's natural jacket. But just like how you'd start to sweat if you wore too many jackets on a warm day, our Earth is starting to heat up because there are too many greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. So, just like a blanket keeps us warm at night by trapping our body heat, these gases are trapping the sun's heat around the Earth. What happens when our Earth gets too hot? Well, just like when you get a fever and feel unwell, the Earth also starts to show signs that it's not feeling too good. You see, our Earth is a bit like a giant living organism, and when it gets too hot, it starts to show symptoms. One of these symptoms is more frequent and severe heat waves. Just like when you're sick and your body temperature goes up, the Earth's temperature is also rising. This leads to periods of extremely hot weather, known as heat waves, which can be very dangerous. They can cause wildfires, dry up water supplies and make it really difficult for people and animals to stay cool. Another symptom the Earth shows when it gets too hot is stronger and more common storms. When the Earth is feverish, it can lead to more energy in the atmosphere, which can then lead to more intense storms. These storms can cause a lot of damage, tearing down trees, destroying homes, and even causing floods. Speaking of floods, that's another symptom the Earth shows when it gets too hot. As the Earth's temperature rises, it causes ice at the North and South Poles to melt. This extra water flows into the oceans and can cause them to rise, leading to floods in coastal areas. These floods can wash away homes, ruin crops and force people to move away from their homes. And just like when you're sick and you don't feel like eating, the Earth also struggles to produce enough food when it's too hot. The heat can make it too hot for crops to grow, and the floods and storms can destroy what's left. This can lead to food shortages, which means there might not be enough for everyone to eat. So, just as we feel sick when we have a fever, our Earth is also showing signs of being unwell, because it's too hot. Now, you might be wondering, 
Can we do anything about it? And the answer is, yes we can. There are many ways we can help cool down our Earth, just like how we would take off a heavy coat when we're hot. First, let's talk about reducing greenhouse gas emissions. You might remember how we said that these gases act like extra clothing for our Earth. Well imagine if we could take off some of that extra clothing. One way to do this is by using less energy. Think about it like this. Every time we turn off the lights when we leave a room, it's like unbuttoning a little bit of that heavy coat. Another solution is to use renewable energy. This is energy that comes from sources that won't run out, like the sun or the wind. It's kind of like switching from a heavy winter coat to a light jacket. The sun and the wind are always there, and they don't create the extra heat that burning coal or gas does. We can also help by promoting policies that support these changes. This means encouraging our leaders to make decisions that help our Earth. It's like asking your mom or dad to turn down the heat when it's too hot inside. Lastly, conservation is a big part of the solution. This means using less and saving more. We can do things like recycling or planting trees. Trees are great because they can actually take some of the extra clothing off our Earth. They absorb carbon dioxide, one of those greenhouse gases, and give us back oxygen. So, just as we can take off a heavy coat when we're hot, we can also help our Earth cool down by making these changes. It's all about working together to make our home a more comfortable place to live. What can we do as individuals to help? Imagine you're playing a team game, a big worldwide game where everyone on Earth is on the same team, and our shared goal is to protect our home, our planet. Just like in any team game, every player's action counts. It's the same with tackling climate change. Every action you take, big or small, can help make a difference. One of the easiest ways we can help is by conserving energy. Think of energy like a basket of apples. If we take an apple only when we really need it, the basket will last longer. The same goes for energy. When we turn off the lights when we leave a room, or unplug electronics when they're not in use, we're saving energy. That's like leaving more apples in the basket for later. Recycling is another great way to help our team. When we recycle, we're like a magician turning an old used item into something brand new. This means we don't have to make more stuff from scratch, which can be pretty hard on our planet. So, next time you finish a bottle of juice, remember, you're a recycling magician who can give that bottle a second life. Another important way we can help is by learning more about our environment. The more we know about our world, the better we can care for it. So, let's be curious, let's ask questions, read books, and explore nature. Knowledge is a powerful tool that can help us make smarter choices and be better teammates in this big game. Now you might be thinking, can my actions really make a difference? Absolutely! Remember that in our team game, every player's action counts. Even the smallest actions like turning off a faucet or picking up litter can help. So let's do our part. Let's work together to save energy, recycle and learn more about our beautiful planet. Remember just like in a team game, every little action counts. Together, we can help cool down our earth and make it a happier, healthier home for all of us.